about Israel and what's happening at Israel, every question and every answer becomes epistemic because we're all speaking about what we know, where we get our knowledge from. So Sam has just said, I don't know anything about what's happening in Israel and thrown a whole lot of statistics at me about this one's converted and that one's converted. So the Israel in the Bible is the, is the Israel existing today, according to you? More or less, yeah. But are you aware, but are you aware that the Israel that you refer in and you support, they're not religious, they're secular? No. Well, when, you're talking about today? Yeah, they're secular. Yeah, so you're supporting yeah. it. You, yeah. are you are a religious person. Greg, you, Greg you're a religious person. Yeah. You're a religious person, but you're prepared to support a system that is secular. No, no, no. I don't a so political, I, aggressive system that is secular. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm asking a question. Please don't put words in my mouth. Okay. Um, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Um, sorry? That's the wrong verse. He has to run away. If you do that now, we are informed about a topic. Oh, no, no. Zechariah 12. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. When they die now, I haven't slept in a country. I don't know where is it. Or they start to talk. Or like they did. This is a very important scripture. Okay. Um, and I will pour no, on the no, house of. No, not that one. This is happened. This is happened. I'll pour upon the house of David. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I'll pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for his firstborn. So if you give me 30 seconds, I will listen to you. Right. This is the, this is the problem I have. When I arrived at Speaker's Corner today, the Roman centurion was standing there and speaking nonsense. So I said to all the people that were around here, the enemy is not Islam, the enemy is not Israel, the enemy is not Christianity, the enemy is not the Romans. The enemy is, and I was asking, who is the enemy? Now I'm asking you, who is your worst enemy? Satan. Okay. My worst enemy, that's how I used to respond to that question. No. Satan is my worst enemy. The Bible doesn't say that. Okay. The Bible says, beware of him. He's like a roaring lion walking around trying to devour all flesh. But the Bible also says, you are your own worst enemy. Because when you arrive and you stand in front of Almighty God to give account for your life, that scripture that I've just read out for you, all of Israel is going to mourn for him whom they pierced. Who crucified Jesus? The Jews, the Romans, all of us, myself included. We crucified him. We put him up on the cross and we took his, his life from him and it was perfect and it was sinless. So my question to you is, we can get involved in political discussions about Israel and, uh, and, and Palestine and uh, we'll never get to the truth. We'll never get to the bottom. Because the standard that we're using, the objective standard to get the truth out, is all epistemology. It's all your study of your knowledge. I get that. I get, I get that. Okay. Now, so the, politi the politics of Israel and your support for it, that's one thing. And you had a fantastic conversation there. That, that, that's fine. But I don't, I mean, we don't have to talk about this. I do not see how it is that you support a regime as a Christian, strong practicing Christian, you support a regime that is actually against the very Christ you believe in. Number one, generally Jews do not believe in Jesus other than a loser. And a lot of Jews here confess that in many different ways. They do not believe in Jesus except as a person who is a loser. According to your scriptures, if a person do not believe in Jesus as the Messiah, that person becomes Antichrist. So if a system, a political system, do not believe in your Jesus, technically, according to your scriptures, that system is antichrist. How you, as a practicing Christian, following your Bible and your text, will support a regime that is against the very Christ that you believe in? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't okay. add up. I understand it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make, add up to me. You make a valid point. You make a valid point. Except 
if we go by our standards of answering that question, it wouldn't make sense. I wouldn't be able to answer you. But if you go by God's standards, then then everything makes sense. All right. Is it implicit or explicit? What the the, the no, my you, response? You, you are going to quote a scripture to sh explain to me to justify your support for Israel. And yes. however, it is okay for you as a Christian to support a system that does not even believe in your Jesus. If you believe Jesus is God, a system who does not believe in your God, you are obliged to support that system. And I'm trying to understand what are you reading and what are you seeing? Well, I've just read to you from Zechariah 12, which says that all of Israel will mourn for the one whom they pierced. Psalm 118 verse 8 says, The stone which is the cornerstone, the, the builder's block in other words, the very cornerstone, uh, uh, will become the chief cornerstone, but you've rejected it. In other words, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, you will reject the real Messiah, and you will accept the false Messiah. So the Jews, now in the next, I don't know how long, but we are close now, uh, the Jews are going to reject, uh, the, they will accept the false Messiah who I believe is either the Dijal or the Mahdi. I, I haven't studied enough of uh, Isl Islamic eschatology to know exactly how, but it's almost a mirror image of our eschatology. So when you speak to me and you say, the Jews are my enemy. Then I didn't say that. I, okay, no. you're saying that the Jews are the Antichrist. No, I'm saying according to your Bible, yeah? if a person or a nation or an ideology deny that Jesus is the Messiah, yeah. According to your book, that system or that individual is the Antichrist. Yeah. Now, I'm asking you... Not so what, much the Messiah, but the Messiah, right, but Messiah. He, okay. God. But according, yeah. to, according to what I read, and yeah. I'm, I may have misread or misunderstood, but according to what I read, if someone does not believe that the, Jesus is the Messiah, then that person becomes the Antichrist. You are saying to me, you're obliged to defend your Antichrist system which is not religious, which deny Jesus and even call Jesus a normal loser, a person who wasted his life. See, you saying I, I, you're obliged to support them and defend their crimes. I'm not defending the system. I'm yes, defending you were. The, no, I'm defending the nation, the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is different to the system now, because I, God says, I, I will curse but you were defending, you. you were defending the political power, the political policies and atrocities. No, no what you I'm were. trying to do what it's trying to do is find a standard where we could have a discussion. And what I did was I made the fatal mistake of being drawn into it again and, and uh, I got triggered. So that's why I said, now let me stop here. So you made some mistakes in what you said before? Uh, uh, not, not mistakes, it's nothing wrong making not mistakes. mistakes in my political uh, view, which is um, uh, and now. I used to believe in a two-state solution up until the 7th of October. Now I don't believe in that anymore. Now I believe that this is going to be God is sovereign and therefore he will work out in Israel what he wants to work out. Israel will not be defeated if God doesn't want them to be defeated. But If God wants them to my be friend defeated, is this. they'll be defeated. Greg, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. We, we, we're making some progress in terms of our conversation. I'm listening to you carefully. I get what you're saying. But what I'm trying to understand very clear, carefully. Now, if either one of us, may God forbid, I'm only using this as a conversation, were ever guilty of supporting something that's wrong, we will take a share of that sin if we do it. Wrong so, in whose eyes? America in the sight of God. America in the sight of God. God. In the sight of God's yes. eyes. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. I agree with you. Yes. Not, not in my God eyes and your America eyes. No, in the name of God. Sure. Right. So if somebody is committing a crime against God and a crime against humanity, if you and I support that, we share in that sin. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, as a practicing Christian, which I respect, I cannot understand why would you support a person or a system who is ungodly who is very secular, who does not believe Jesus is God, is the Son of God, or even they see Jesus as a person who wasted his entire life. Sorry, sorry, Greg. And you have to find me a scripture or some kind of reasoning to justify that. The whole, no, the whole, the whole Bible gives you an account. The whole Bible sp speaks about, do you know how many times Israel rebelled against God? Start worshipping idols, sacrifice their children to but, Molech. But then, you know what's the argument towards that? Yeah. The common argument is this. But no, I haven't the even people, finished. No, sorry, go I on. No, you carry it. Sorry, the, I apologize. Israel have rejected. They've rejected God. Countless times. And this prophesied that they'll reject the Messiah. 
which they've done. Right. So Israel itself is is um, uh, is fulfilling scripture by not calling on the name of Jesus, but they will because the Bible says they will. They are going but to turn. Greg, 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 my friend. Yeah. The people you call in Israel today, yeah. they are not Israel. They are not Bani Israel. The people you call in Israel today are some white-faced Europeans that look like you, yeah. who are imposters and impersonate a personality who they are not. Well, I the disagree people, with that. The, and there's no the, evidence uh, for that. Listen, first of all, first yeah. of all, I understand you disagree with that. These Ashkenazi Europeans who are go yeah. who, the Ashkenazi Europeans who are right now present in Israel postulating themselves as Bani Israel, they are not the people who your children of Israel in the scriptures refer to. And I think that's where we will respectfully disagree. I would say to you, those Ashkenazis, white Europeans who come from all parts of Europe and America, who is in Israel today, you are equating them and say they are the same people in your book. They are not. So they had a chance, all these Ashkenazi, they had a chance to convert to Christianity to avoid being persecuted way before the Second World War. Yeah, but they're not in Bani Spain, Israel. They're not, they're not the children of Israel from they Yaqub. They didn't take they're white face, they didn't blue eye, just came. like you, just, down you in Israel today. And they're not even religious. You know, they're secular. You know when Daniel, when Why Daniel would you support a Babylon? state Where that is Babylon? ungodly? Where was Babylon? Baghdad, Iraq. Yeah. Iraq. Yeah. So Israel was taken into captivity and they were in the Babylonian... The people who were in Israel now, they were taken into captivity? No, no. Okay. Let's, let's look at it chronologically. No, Just but bear with me. Right, I'm okay, bearing with I'm you, with but, but, but your point has to lead uh, towards yeah, saying exactly. the people who are in Israel now, in the state of Israel, they are the yeah. same Bani Israel, the but children we're, of we're, Israel we're from Jacob. What's your name again? Abdullah. Abdullah, we're becoming tautological now. We are, we're, we're repeating things just in a different way. No, because we want to stick to the point. Yeah, but this is the point. All right. The point is Israel and Palestine and the people that call themselves Jews now, you're saying they're not the Jews. And I'm saying that the pattern... But they're saying that themselves. No, no, some of them. A handful uh, of them. Okay. A handful, a handful of Jewish people say but they're guess not who's saying, guess who's the handful? Uh, listen, I'm Among Jewish. them, I'm, I'm Jewish. Okay, all right, so I respect that. Jewish, right. And uh, he was an anti-theist. He wasn't even an atheist. He was an anti-theist and my mother an anti-theist. My mother wasn't Jewish, my father was. Didn't practice Judaism, didn't accept it. But when I became a Christian, the family went happy. Right. They went so you're European Jews? Uh, Your father? Um, South African. Yeah. But yeah. He lived in South Africa. From the, uh, Originally European. Yeah. yeah. Um, European Jews, the diaspora that happened when people went from, some people went from Babylon back to Israel. There's always been Jews living in Israel. Always. Not as many as, as the Arabs, but there's been Jewish people living there. There's been a community there. Almost bulk any them, country you find Arabs, you'll find Jews. Bulk of them, bulk of They're the cousins. Jews in the diaspora, for persecution and all those things all over Europe. But under persecution, they didn't stop being Jewish. They didn't say, actually, we're really European. The Germans were trying to, to before DNA was invented, the Germans were finding ways and means of this, including their blood. The whole thing about German Nazism is blood and soil. Blood and soil. Blood is racism and soil is the environment. Today we are struggling Which with is them. the same ideology of Israel today? We, no, no. Blood and land. Israel, no, no. Blood and land. No, no. Not at all. Israel is trying to... So the ideal, the, the practice, the practice of Israel for the past 80 years has not been a policy. Important thing for us. Land and to acquire that land is blood. Absolutely. You're saying that land, that land is promised. You, to are, them. you, you accept that, that land was promised to Abraham. You accept that. Yes. Yeah. Right. You accept that. Yeah. Right. But, but what the racism? I don't accept the blood part. No. I don't accept them. Well, trying to commit gen genocide. No, but it, all right. Let, let, let's say they're not trying to come in. We're going with that. The ideology of Israel today, the Zionist ideology of Israel today, is race superior, superiority. No. The race don't, superior. I don't accept that. The no. race superior. No, I, I think that of Islam. Abdullah, I think that of Islam. Israel? Islam. Is Islam. What do you think, think of Islam? I think Islam is a supremacy belief. It is. Because you've got, it to, is. You've got to have, you've got to be able to speak Arabic. And, no, no, um, that's not supremacist. And, 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 you don't understand what's Dimi, su The whole super. thing of Dimmies, every, no, 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 everything no. about that. Is you were going right, but you start going astray now. Yes, Islam is a superior religion. 
and it have levels of supremacy. However, what you must understand is this. The truth is superior to falsehood. The prophets are superior to all other men. Amen. Right. The scriptures are superior to all other fiction books, all other books. They believe the paradise is superior to the hellfire. Yeah. Right? The holy lands is superior to the lands that are not holy. Yeah. So in life, everything are not equal. Some things are superior to others. And make no mistake, no apologies, Islam as a belief, as an ideology, is superior to all other ideologies. Well, I, I right. think that's now, a mistake to say that. All right, that's because fine. God, we, we, God, we can discuss God, that. God says, right. God says, we can discuss that. The only that. way that you are going to get into heaven is by calling on the name of Jesus. Right. And he says here clearly, Jesus, in his words, said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even until the end of the age. Right. You're right. Now, listen to this. Two things I want to respond. Number one, that's good for people who believe in the Bible. But for those people who do not believe in the Bible, there's no salvation for them. Now, if someone was to come from a country worshipping cows and animals, and he come here and you start reciting the scriptures to him, your Bible, he doesn't believe in your Bible. How are you going to convince him to believe that your Bible is the word of God? How are oh, you going to do that? Because very, you, very you read the scriptures to me. Very easy. A lot of people don't believe in that. Very easy. Do you believe that God is sovereign and he's almighty? 100% sir. 100%. So when God says in Psalm 138, verse 2, this, but I, is, this I, is very easy to answer. This is explicit. Okay? This is so easy to answer. What is the question I'm asking? You're saying, you, if someone comes and they worship cows, um, how, um, uh, how can I show them that uh, Christianity is right? No. How can you prove that the Bible yeah? is the infallible word of God? Oh, okay. Even better. Um, the Bible, Psalm 138, verse 2, For you have magnified your word above all your name. Okay? You have magnified your word above all your name. So God's word, which Muhammad confirmed. What did Muhammad confirm? He confirmed the people of the book. He, didn't, he never said, he said people corrupt the book. Which book? I'll tell you now. He said people have corrupted the book, but those were the people corrupting the book. Nowhere in the Quran does no, it he doesn't say, say... he doesn't say people corrupted the book. No, no, nowhere in the Quran does it say this book is corrupted. No, the Quran doesn't make any mention of the Bible. It does. No, it doesn't. It does. It speaks no. about the book. Christians would, the Christians would like to do that in order to give validity to their book. The, the Bible is not mentioned in the Quran. Who's the people of the book? One, one, one minute. The Bible is not mentioned in the Quran and the Bible is not mentioned in the Bible. Of course it is. No, the word Bible is not in the Bible. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, and the, the word, word Bible is not mentioned in the Quran. If, we, if we're going to go by those standards, there's a whole lot of things we can say about the, the, um, the Quran. Like what? There's words that aren't mentioned in the Quran that you believe in. All right, but what I'm trying to say to you is that the Bible makes no mention of the bible in the in the bible, the bible and it makes, speaks about the word no yes i agree with that yeah. greg but just for accuracy just to be accurate the quran does not mention the bible and the bible does not mention the bible so the question is no, if no, you try i can't we, agree with that because, because it is okay but, all right but, but i don't know how you can say a thing like that in the book of revelation the last chapter of the book of revelation it uh, does not mention the bible it does not. What does it Greg, say? don't waste do not, your time. Do not, uh, 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 anyone who takes away from this word or adds to it. That's a very different co conversation. And I, I'm familiar with that verse. Yes, yeah. I'm familiar with that verse. And I agree, with the, 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 I agree with the essence of the message. I agree with that. Right. Both of us agree with that. But what I'm trying to say, the Quran does not mention the Bible. And the Bible does not mention the Bible. The Quran does mention the Bible. Uh, no, it Twelve doesn't. Twelve times. All right. Twelve times. Show me in the Quran one verse okay. that mentioned the Bible. Well, it speaks about the people of the book. But that's not the Bible. Okay, what is it? Now, you, when it says Ahl al-Kitab, you want that to mean the Bible. You want it to mean the Bible. However, there's another group of people existing who have a book, who have a book. They may not have a Bible. And they follow that book. They will say, when Allah says Ahl al-Kitab, it's referring to me too. So the question is, the Quran does not make any mention of the word Bible. The Quran right. makes mention of Ahl al-Kitab. So you disagree Nasara, with Zakir now. I don't even know what he's saying and I am allowed to disagree with him. I don't yeah, follow sure, him sure. and I don't worship him. Okay. But we are talking about the Quran 
and I'm making it clear to you, the Bible is not the Injil. There's a difference between the Bible and the Injil. The Bible have 40 different authors. And the first 50 Bibles was made was made by Constantine. Okay, now, the Injil. You have to understand the origins. Abdullah, I, I, I'm happy to speak with you. But Sorry. Do you see how we've gone off the subject here? We've gone so far off no, the subject. No, but I thought you would appreciate the opportunity to prove the Bible to be the Word of God so that's that you a, could convince that's, pagans. That's another conversation. Okay. A pr a pr proving the, 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 the veracity of the Bible, proving that it's God's Word. If I read to you scriptures, you're not going to accept it. I may, I may not, but what I'm saying, okay. generally speaking, Greg, so if you have people who don't believe in the Bible, how can you convince them that this is the Bible without quoting the Bible? Psalm 138. You don't know how to two. do that. Are you? Psalm 138 verse 2. I can show you I'm how just, to do it. Psalm 138 verse 2 that I've just read to you. says, God says, I hold my word even above my name. Now, are you saying that almighty or powerful God, the creator of the word, can't keep his word intact? What I would say to you, I agree with the statement you just made. But the question is this. When people study in scriptures, you must understand the word of God, the word of God come long before a written document. So for example, if you look at the Islamic scriptures, there was a Quran revealed to Muhammad, which is a verbal transmission. So Jesus had guidance, received, he received guidance. It was a verbal transmission. So the verbal transmission of guidance came before written document. So the prophet Muhammad practiced what he practiced. He taught it generations after people start writing it down. So when we talk about the word of God, your mind is a book. But when we talk about the word of God, it's talking about a truth that comes from the prophets that taught a man. So you tell your children what is right and they practice that. So in my culture, my mother will teach my sister a menu it's verbal, verbal transmission I understand not this. a written book i also book. understand usman burned some of the copies of the quran yes i also understand um, a goat or a sheep ate um uh, 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 some yes some oh, well, that's fishes. that's fantastic all, all that's so fantastic it's not perfectly preserved you don't understand what per perfectly preserved means. i do i do and i understand the dye quickly for markings and we've had the haps in the wash here and my, my friend Sai has even put a reward up uh, five thousand pound you want us to, to you want us to have a conversation yeah. a civilized conversation testing the quran and testing the bible you yeah. want to have a conversation there? anytime yes let's anytime. do it today no, no, no. all right no, no, okay no, 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 no. well we'll come back again greg thank you for your time you i really appreciate it but we can have a conversation how to test the bible to see if it is the word of god okay. or the word of man claiming it is god and how to test the quran whether the quran is the word of allah Okay. We can have a conversation on that. It will be a difficult conversation. It's a conversation. It will be full of presuppositions. You are, you are used to difficult conversations. Yeah, yeah. You're used to but it. What I, what, I, what I appreciate more than um, both of us walking away with the same pre presuppositions that we had when we started the conversation, what I appreciate more is a standard that says, I will leave Islam and become a Christian if... And I believe Christianity and become a Muslim if. All right. What is that? What is that standard? What yes. is that thing? Yeah. Yeah. How, what, what, what could I prove to you that would make you a Christian? And what could you prove to me that would make me a Muslim? Right. That's a very good conversation. First of all, I was a Christian. I wasn't born and raised as a Muslim. I was born and raised from a Christian home, practicing Christianity properly as I was practicing. So I've made that jump onto Islam. So I'm quite happy to have a very good conversation about that. So many Christians here ask me, Abdullah, why don't you leave Christianity? Leave Islam and come to Christianity. And I say to them sometimes, oh, I think about it. I'm working on it. And I'm quite happy to, to have a conversation with you. If I was to leave Islam and choose Christianity, what am I giving up and what am I taking? You understand what I'm trying to say? What am I giving up and what am I taking? Now, to understand Christianity and Islam, you have to understand the context and the historical development of the books, both books. So as I said to you before, the first 50 Bibles were made by Constantine in 325, which you already know. The Quran was revealed as a verbal transmission and was taught verbally, oral transmission, and it was established. So even though if the whole entire world was to burn all of the Quran, or people was to go and change the writing of the Quran, it makes no difference to us because our religion is based on oral transmissions. So can you recite the whole Quran? I can recite the Quran, not the all of it. No. 
Eh? I haven't committed to memory, but I can recite the Quran. So, for example, if you look at any Muslim here, yeah. if they burn all the Quran and they put a, 10 of us together, yeah. the portions that I know, I will share. The portions that he knows, he will share. The portion that the other person will know, they'll share. And together, we have the whole Quran in memory. You could say that with Christians as well, even though our book is 10 right. times longer than your so, book. My, 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 you can my put the issue, whole whole issue, Bible together. Show me one is, Christian who memorized the Bible from cover to cover. No. Exactly. But it's a tradition in the Muslim world. Yeah. You understand but, that? Uh, are you saying there are Muslims that can recite the entire Quran from cover to cover? My family members. Yeah. I have family members who accepted Islam yeah. and they memorized Quran from cover to cover. Really? Entire one. And you know what? Good news about it is common practice. Okay. Very common. And it's a tradition in Islam that goes. I looked on YouTube to see someone reciting the whole Quran. It's easy, it's easy. In Arabic? Yeah. Easy. In English? Yeah. English? Yeah. Huh? English? Yes, I know people in Birmingham who have memorized the Quran from cover to cover in English. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, and I know people. And they, and they, they never have a contradiction, never have a mistake. No mistakes, no contradiction. That's interesting. I would like to see that. But why don't the, no, Muslims, if you see why, that, why don't if, the Muslims put it on, on YouTube? Well, not every Muslim want YouTube. And the other question too, I can bring you in contact with people who have so many of them memorize the Quran from cover to cover in English and in Arabic. Oh, that's interesting. I would like to, I would like to hear that. Okay. Right. So what that does, that, it helps your understanding. No, no, no. no listen, you, Greg, I'm, you, I'm you. not asking you to leave Christianity. Sure, sure, sure. No, I'm not. I, I'm asking I'm you to leave Islam. Right. You can. That's fine. And we can have a conversation on it. But I'm not here to ask you to leave Christianity. I'm here to learn from you, understand what, what you're likewise. seeing, and what likewise. you're seeing, right, and to share and with to you, you if you have any misconception, I would share with you. One question. Yeah, go on. Surah 8, 43 to 44. Hmm. Allah says, if I show them to you in many years, the battle of Badr, Badr, Allah says, if I show them to you as many, uh, you wouldn't have gone. I showed them to you as few. Allah calls himself the greatest of deceivers. Makir, do you agree or do you disagree? I do not disagree at all. Allah does call himself the greatest of no, deceivers. No, no. First of all, first of all, in, if you know anybody in Arabic, you have a word called makar. Yeah. Makar. Yeah. Makar does not mean deceive. Okay. You must now, understand that. I, I, now, I've seen Christian Prince on his channel debating this. And then he shows other other places where that word is used. Yes, I can. I'm going to get to that. I'm okay. going to show you, and I will also explain to you. I will also explain to you. I will also explain to you. I have no problem. I have no problem with a God that deceives. Really? Yeah. Are you on camera? Doesn't make a difference. Do you want to put me on camera? Get your, get your phone out and put me on camera. That would be the first time at Speaker's Corner in five years that I've heard that. Okay. That would be literally the first Muslim that would say that. All right. And I but, but also, what I want to do... Because what I want then to my do. respect for you goes up. Then my respect for Islam goes up. It goes up a lot. Sorry? My respect for Islam goes up a lot. Okay. If you don't have a problem with that, it's like an atheist saying, I don't have a problem with killing babies. Then I go, oh, at last I've met a true but, atheist. But that's, that's not a good comparison, please. With all due okay, respect. Okay, yeah, I, that, I, I didn't not, mean, sorry. No. I, that's, that's okay. I, I, to me, I, I feel disrespected here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, yeah. I didn't mean that to, I didn't mean that to sound how it sounded. So I have ADD. Attention deficit disorder. We all have it. Uh, I'm quite high on the spectrum. Okay. So um, please, please do forgive me for that. Um, I didn't want that to sound quite like it did. So I'm with a very friendly gentleman, a lovely Muslim gentleman, genuinely one of the loveliest men I've met at Speaker's Corner. We've been having a debate for about a conversation, a lot, uh, conversation, <laughs> a conversation about a lot of different things. Um, I've just asked Abdullah about uh, Surah 8, 43 to 44. Um, and in actual fact, if I can just read it quickly. Um, you got it? Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, remember, O oh Muhammad, when Allah showed them to you in your dream as few, and if He had shown them to you as many, you believers would have lost courage and you would have disputed in the matter of whether to fight. But Allah saved you from that. Indeed, He is knowing of that within the breasts. So um, we contradict that here at Speaker's Corner many times with Surah 2262. But before we go there, um, Allah, um, Abdullah has just given me this lovely response uh, where um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I said um, Allah claims to be the greatest of deceivers, Makir. Makar. Makar. Yeah. Uh, that M A K R in English, but it's pronounced in Arabic Makar. Makar. And uh, I said Allah claims to be the greatest of deceivers. And Abdullah, very interestingly, for the first time, has responded with He does not have. Shall I respond? Said, yeah, you right. respond. <laughs> now, to be. To be involved in religious conversations, one of the first principles, we have to be honest, very, very honest. And our honesty will carry us with the truth. So, Greg, I want to be very open and honest Thank with you. you. Thank right. you. So you're saying that the Quran, Allah described himself as being the greatest of deceiver. Yeah. Right. So the, the verse I think you're referring to is Surah 22, where Allah used the word makar, informing the Prophet Muhammad, remember when they were planning, conspiring to kill you, to restrict you, to imprison you, and to kick you out. They were planning, and I too were planning, and in the end, Allah is the best planner. Now, in translation, some translation use the word deceiver, but I do not accept deceiver as a translation, as a translation but what I will do is also introduce you to verses in the Quran which Allah used as deception. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 9, Allah says, يُخَادِئُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They are trying to deceive the believers. They are trying to be deceive Allah and the believers and they only deceive themselves. So khada'a also means deceive. This is what deceive me. Now, there's another verse where Allah used, um, where Allah used the word um, deceive, gurur. So Arabic in Quran, if you're looking for deceive, it's gurur, meaning to say the life of this world is nothing but short-term pleasure and deception. Right. So Allah told Prophet Muhammad that they were planning to kill you and to kick you out and to imprison you. And they were planning, and I were planning, and in the end, Allah is the best of planners. So the word used is deceiver. Now, I'll tell you why I don't have a problem, even if God is the deceiver. Number one, God is always justified. Whatever he does, he is justified. And in regards to deception, if your family was to throw a surprise birthday party for you, in the process of that, they may use some means of deception to give you a birthday party. But it's not the deception that you will chastise them or mistrust them. So even though if God was to deceive me, I have full confidence in the end it is for my good. So if God was to hide or conceal some reality to me that in the end will bring me closer to him, I do not have a problem with God hiding things, concealing things, or even deceiving me. But it is not the deception where somebody will deceive you to make money, deceive you to harm you. So I said to you, Greg, and I'll repeat it again, I don't have a problem with a God that deceives because God is always justified, always justified. And in the end, if he deceived me, it is for my good. But if you want evidence to build your argument, Khada'a, Khada'a in Arabic, that's deceive, and Ghurur, as Allah says, the life of this world is short term pleasure and deception. And so you're saying Makid doesn't, makar. Uh, makar. doesn't mean deceive. No, it can be he's used, planning. it can be used as that, but in this verse, it means planning. Okay. Well, but if you, you, uh, yeah, if you hold it for you. Yeah. So, in the context of that verse that we just read out, Surah 8, 43 to 44, remind Muhammad. Muhammad when Allah showed them to you in your dream as few, and if He had shown them to you as many, you believers would have lost courage and you would have disputed in the matter of whether to fight. But Allah saved you from that. 
indeed he's knowing of that within the breasts. Right. Now let me explain the problem that I have. Yes. Because you say God is justified. Always justified. Always justified. Always. Do you say God is always holy? Always. God is always holy. Always. So God cannot lie. Cannot lie. Um, I, I wouldn't phrase things like that. I don't say things like that. Well, but I'm saying God, God is even... Either God can lie or he can't lie. Well, first of all, let's assess a lie. Yeah. Right. What do we know about lies? It's not the truth. It's deceit. It's, it's not the truth. It's deceit. Right. So I'm asking you, if your wife and children was to make a surprise birthday party for you, or your annual marriage, annual wedding, there was a surprise, and your family were to exercise some level of deceit, yeah. would you consider them evil or untrustworthy? I might. Would you? I might. Would you? Yeah. I, I, you I, would? No, no. I, 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 might, I, I might say that's um, uh, trustworthy. Sorry? I might say it's trustworthy or deceit. It doesn't matter what I think. No, no, but I'm, but I'm trying to give in, things context. In terms of an, no, I'm an trying analogy, to, I'm trying to give context. In terms of and an the analogy, reason, the and reason I agree why, with you. Right. I'm agreeing with right. you. I can right. see where you're going. So for example, and I'm saying yes. Right. So for example, we live in England. Mm -hmm. We're blessed to live in this country. This country has security. And the security of this country, a lot of it is best preserved in a secret. So we don't have access to, if you're going through immigration and the immigration officer was to use your details and he doesn't tell you what is here. Sure. So that's a secret to him. Yeah. Right. But the question is what I'm trying to say. God is always justified. And whenever we use the word deception, we use it in a context. And the context sure. tell you what the word mean. And I'm trying to say to you, I don't have a problem serving a God, worshiping a God that deceives me for my own good. Okay. Now, I have a problem. Right. And this is why I have a, such a struggle moving from Christianity to Islam. Right. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 20, it says, when you go out and battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Now you contrast that with saying to Muhammad, there's a few people around the corner. Um, go out and sort them out. So it's somewhere, what's your name? Suleim. Suleiman. Suleiman. Say so, so, so Suleiman comes up now to us and he says, there's um, two skinny guys around the corner stomping on a little 10 year old. And we get around the corner and there's 15 guys there. Big guys. We beat them in the battle. Are you going to trust Suleiman the next time he comes to say to us, the following week at Speaker's Corner and he comes and says, there's one skinny, weedy little old lady around the corner hitting a, a, a little boy. Can you guys come and help? Are we going to trust it? A poor analogy. I don't agree with your analogy. I understand your point and I respect your position, but I don't accept your analogy. Your analogy is poor. And I'm trying to say, even though it's man... better than the birthday party. Okay, all right. So my analogy is poor sometimes, but we get a sense of where I am. But my trust in God and my knowledge in God tells me I have no issues with worshiping a God in whom may not reveal things to me in reality sure. for my own good. Sure, so I'm I, with you. I, 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 I'm, I'm born. With you, but that's not what happened no, there. Right. No, I'm born. I'm living in. I'm living my life, and all the different experiences I have in life, God did not pre-program me with all the information. A lot of things I learned through experience, through error, through mistakes. Now, so the question is, you have a problem with a God. You have a problem with a God who will will conceal things from you. Now, do you have a problem with a God who regrets? No, if God conceals from me, if, sorry, yeah. if God conceals from me, I have no problem with that. All right, so God, you, you don't have a problem with the verse no, then? All right. No, no, no. So we're no, in the no, same no, 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 I'm not saying that. Okay, because you have a problem the word, with the verse. The, no, no, the, I have a problem with that verse, but he's not talking about concealing. He's talking about concealing the truth. Who owns the truth? God. Right. So if he conceal it, yeah. it's his property. Yeah, but he's not concealing the truth. He's, 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 he's actively deceiving. Right. So deceive in if, context. Deceive. Is, Do you think is, deceive, deceive have a context to it? Deceit. The word deceit has a context to it, especially in Surah 843, 44. All right. I'm and there. the context I, is, he's deceived Muhammad. A father, a father, all right. A he, father or a parent will look at television programs of which they would not allow their children to look at. Absolutely. So, so for example, a, a responsible parent will say, 
You're not allowed to see this. You're not allowed to use the knife. You're not allowed to use the cooker until you reach a certain age. Right. So there's restrictions based on knowledge. So God has, is all-knowing. And in his all-knowing capacity and his wisdom, some things he does not reveal to us because he knows if he let us know that, our faith will crumble. He do that in order to preserve our faith. Okay, now, so I, don't have a problem with, I don't have a problem with that. Now, you have a problem with it. Yep. Now, I'm asking you a question now. Do you have a problem with a God that forgets or regrets? No, that's not the context of what I'm speaking about. No, but... That's completely different. It, it, it's a different, but I'm asking you, do you have a problem with a God that okay, regrets? Okay, but can we just go back one step before yes. we finish? When we use our analogies, God's not concealing the truth. In other words, He's not, he's not holding back from the truth. I mean, Christian God. No, no, Allah. Right. Allah with Muhammad. He's not holding back from the truth. He's not concealing what is going to happen at the Battle of Badr. He's, he's lied to Muhammad. Allah has lied to Muhammad. He told them, there's a few people over there. And then but after the battle... Didn't say that. He didn't say there was That's exactly no. what it says. No, it doesn't. It says a few people. No. He's, I showed them that. to you. No, it doesn't say that. In a vision, no. in a vision, he says, Remember Muhammad when Allah showed them to you in your dream as few. And if he had shown them to you as many, you believers would have lost courage and you would have disputed in the matter of whether to fight. But Allah saved you from that. So Allah is saying, Allah is saying, all, although I'm all powerful, although I'm all knowing, although I'm all justified, if I had showed them to you as many people, you would have started. Hey, either one. You would have started yeah. disputing. Is it okay? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, you would have started disputing. But I didn't show them to you as many. I deceived you. I lied to you. I told you. If we had an independent panel of judges now judging this conversation, if someone says there's a few people over there we're going to fight with, and when you get there there's many, it's doesn't all right. matter. Huh? It, <laughs> if you can put from the other side. If he yeah. said if I uh, show them to you as many, Brother, uh, can you put from the other side? You pay. Um, oh, you, you can come this side if you want. Okay, sorry. If yeah. I turn them, yeah. If is I, that okay? Yeah. 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 If I show them to you as many. Um, if I'd shown them to you as many, um, uh, you would have disputed. So, first of all, your your one premise is you would have had um, Muhammad arguing with Muhammad, arguing with Allah about whether he should go and fight because there's too many people. No, that's not what it means. Clearly, it means that. No, it doesn't. Well, he, why oh did my he God, use please, the word you would doesn't. have disputed with me in the matter? No, you didn't say you would have disputed with me. You didn't say that. Shall we read it? Verse? No, it does not say that, Greg. Well, trust I've me. I've got that from the Quran. You trust me, please. You've These got guys it from. gave me a Quran here. You... First of all, with all due respect, I apologize that many times you may have a Quran with translation that does not give you the accurate description. So I apologize for that. However, in the text of this conversation, rather than we having a circular conversation, is that number one, in the Battle of Badr, Allah did not show the prophet and his community, his community, all of the enemy, he only showed them the enemy as a few rather than big because he didn't want them to dispute or their faith may get weak. So God does things to us, prevent us from things, blind us to some things, not allow us to see some things in order to but preserve our faith. To lying to. Well, to you it might be if you choose to, but the question, this is the Quran, this is the Islamic position, and as a matter of fact, the question you should be asking yourself is why is it Muhammad allowed his Lord to lead him into a battle in which he see the enemy as few, whereas they were large, and he didn't have a problem with his God. And secondly, 1400 years after that, 1500 years after that, millions of Muslims all over the world did not have a problem with accepting God as all-knowing and all-wise and accepting the fact that God may not reveal things to you in order to protect you. But the Bible says millions upon millions will be deceived. The Bible says most of mankind will be deceived. Yeah, but that's different. What you're talking about, deceive regarding the Dajjal, the Antichrist, deceive regarding no, no, Jesus. No, yes, no, that's I'm what it is. talking about believing in Christ. No, no, no. There will be many Antichrists, many people yes, that... Yes, but when the Bible talk about deceive, it means to say a deception 
that will lead you into the hellfire. But Abdullah, Th God, this is God very says different. In Deuteronomy chapter twenty. This is very different. Just go into the battle. Even if there's more, they're more numerous than you. I'm with you. I'll defeat you. Why would Allah change from that to having what to deceive changing? Muhammad? Well, uh, I'm saying to you, we don't have a problem with a God that withholds, that shows things, or in this context, deceive. And I don't even have a problem with it. I don't have a problem serving a God. And I try to be a very honest individual. A God that deceived me, yeah. withhold things from me, seeing in order to preserve my faith. God is always justified. Now, We're having happens, a circular conversation. What happens if, what happens if uh, uh, Muhammad was deceived right in the beginning? What happens if Muhammad was deceived? Deceived concerning what? Deceive having in these context. Deceived by the angel Jibril. First what of all, if, first of all, because he thought it was all, a jinn. Yeah. First of all, if we having a conversation about scriptures, scriptures you could be honest with the scriptures if you address the context. If an atheist come here and he read your scriptures and take out each word and put it in his own context, he will corrupt the meaning of your book. He would wrongfully, right? So the question is, if you want to make a fair, honest evaluation on Islam, on the Quran. You have to be honest with yourself to say, when I read this verse, this concept, let me put it into context. So if I read something in the Bible, I wouldn't go up on a high horse. I would say, what actually is it trying to say here? Am I imposing something on it? Am I taking it out of context? Because when the Bible speaks, it doesn't speak on a blank page. You know, It's not you open the Bible, you see a blank page in one word, and you can put that in any context you want. When you read the scriptures, you read the scriptures in a context. Mm -hmm. So if you read in the, the Quran and the, the word, English word, deceive, comma, you'll come to a context with it. Yeah. And it's very clear, you already know, that the enemies were planning and Allah were planning. And in the end, Allah is the best of planner. But as for the word deceive, you must learn and you must know for your future reference when you're debating Muslims and the Quran, Guru, Guru is the Arabic word and Khada'a. You call the Una Allah. They wanted to deceive Allah and the believers. But in the end, they deceive themselves and they perceive not. Surah Al Baqarah, the second surah of the Quran, verse 9. So the Arabic right. words used for deception is Guru, meaning to say Allah says, the life of this world is nothing but short pleasure and deception. And um, beware of Satan being the most deceiver. Satan is deceiver. Right. So the word you're using, Makar. Makar in this context means they were planning and conspiring to kill you and to exile you and to constrain you. And while they were planning, I, Allah, was planning. And in the end, I win. I'm the best of planner. It does not say deceive okay. in that context. To but be honest, I, and we just have to be honest. We, 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 and not, I was we, honest with you as yeah, much you, as I you, could. Yeah. You, you have been honest as much as you could be. Uh, the, the thing for me is um, in no way can a holy sovereign God who's almighty and all powerful and all true and all knowing in no way can they lie they can't so you know we've had questions from the philosophers here in the past uh, can god make um, a mountain too heavy for him to lift and you know those type of futile conversations will never go anywhere you know yeah i don't entertain it, it them doesn't prove i don't anything. i find but, them disrespectful yeah i, I do too but I, I find them because you're you're a man that seems to be intellectually honest you also seem to be intellectually hospitable, which means you make space for us and um, to actually each have a, a conversation. So what have I learned from you today? I've learned that um, uh, Muslims can um, have a genuine conversation. Honest. And that means uh, when we can have a genuine conversation, you've got much more of a chance of converting a Christian to Islam from a genuine conversation, honest like conversation, this, yeah. Then, uh, and I believe vice versa. Now, I don't know what you're going to ask me to go away and consider. Okay, what I'd ask you to go away and consider is if Muhammad could have been deceived by Allah. Doesn't matter that he's fine with that. I understand the context that you're talking in, believe it or not, and I understand much your analogy of. Uh, when you say to your kid, um, there's a monster around the corner because you don't want them to run into the traffic. I understand that. I didn't use that analogy. I know, yeah. but I'm saying I can understand that type of analogy. The anal anal analogy that I use was a wife may give a surprise, a surprise anniversary, yeah. wedding anniversary for her husband. And I use the analogy or the kids of may someone do, having yeah. a fight 
um, and, and, and being drawn into a fight when there weren't few and you said that analogy wasn't um, uh, it wasn't a fair or a good analogy I said it was better than your analogy all right that's fine because it was about a fight it was about a battle no it's not about the fight it's much more about the end result of it's, the fight it's so much for example more about being deceived for example but Greg, let me finish let me finish you as a Christian point. will go through pain yeah a lot of pain you'll go through yeah. isolation insult being misunderstood but in the end everything will work out for you now this is right. what i'm saying so to the you, end Abdullah. if I you look at the verse i understand it was you're end looking was... at the end results i'm not looking at the end result that's before fine before we get to the end result i'm looking at the deception and you're refusing to acknowledge the deception although no, i saying... would accept it i do okay so i'm sorry if i didn't but i accept a god that deceives me for my own good okay number okay. one and i That's... think god god is always justified and whatever he does is for my own good so okay. i accept that so if i give you the impression that i did not accept a god that deceived i apologize for it but on record i have no problem that a god that deceives me for my own good okay and that's the now, all knowing god now my problem the all wise god yeah right now my problem is my god because he's holy is incapable of deceiving now there's a scripture if you know the bible well there's a description there's a scripture in thessalonians where god says i will send a strong delusion to them that disbelieve to the disbelievers yes god yes i can relate to that delusion because they've already denied it right so if someone disbelieves i can give you another example example let me give you a, a, a better example to that sorry no, 22 minutes here's, a, here's look at, an example look at moses no no let, he let parted me. the sea with the children of israel yeah he take a staff he parted the sea the children yeah. of israel and he, he escaped yeah pharaoh and his army pursued moses and yeah. what happened to them they were drowned, drowned. yeah right but the question is in pharaoh's mind whatever a believer does he can do so he was deceived he was deceived in thinking that he will be able to cross the sea just as Moses crossed the sea but he was deceived are you with me in yeah. terms of right so that's a scriptural definition and who, of who, deception. who deceived him well two things I would say he probably deceived himself thank you and I would also say make no apologies make it very clear God concealed the truth to him that he's going to drown right in that sea. No, you can't. You can't say that because. All right, let me ask you a question. No, no, hang on. <laughs> in that example that you're using, and I still haven't made my point. All right, sorry. Make example, your point. I apologize. So go in on. that example that you're using, God told the Pharaoh what the plagues were going to be, and he had those plagues. Yes. So he knew full well what he was doing. Yeah. How stupid was he? His firstborn have just been killed. And now he's still going to carry on because he said to them, you can go. He's deceived them. Pharaoh has deceived the, 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 the Hebrews. He's told them you can go and they're going and now he chases them to kill them. So he deceived himself and he deceived the Jews by saying they can go. He chased them. He was caught in the own waters. God never said to Pharaoh, you can pass through these waters. No, he didn't so say that. To he said it to Moses. Right. But let me ask you a question. Pharaoh was crossing the waters and we, we're not we're not saying we're not against each other at this point I think we are saying the same thing, but we're just looking at classical examples Pharaoh was crossing the sea If God wanted God could have revealed to Pharaoh if you cross that sea you will die But he didn't reveal that to him. He concealed that from him. No, he didn't conceal it from him because right. he told Did him he reveal it to him? He, he revealed it to him in that the if he crossed it, no, 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 that's no. the plagues. No, no, but yeah, but that's a there's stretch. a pattern. No, you're stretching but it out. But by then, by yeah. then, God, by then, Pharaoh wasn't listening to God. I'm not so saying if, he, Pharaoh, I'm not, if, 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 if God had said to Pharaoh, the seas are going to close in on you. If, 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 if Moses said, that's do not if, attack that's us. That's if, I'm asking you an okay. honest question, but Greg. But if Moses had turned if around, God, if did Moses God can, did God reveal to Pharaoh you cross that sea you're gonna drown? No, but that's he not didn't reveal it. That's not deceit. No, I'm not saying it is. I'm asking a question. Yeah. Did God reveal it to him? No, he didn't. So he kept it to himself. Yeah. So if God kept some things to himself and allow you to make mistakes, that's not deception. When he has the ability to inform you. Okay. If you look, if you look at two oceans being held apart for people that you've been persecuting, and those people walk through. Do you not think 
I've had 10 plagues hit me. These plagues I've been warned about. I haven't listened to them. Now I've lost, I've lost this, I've lost my crops, I've lost my firstborn. Now you just go, ah, oh, I'll just follow them. God's not, God's revealed already where, where Pharaoh's gone wrong. This is my, this is my point. Thank you very much. Actually, I was Echinacea and honey. Eh? Echinacea and honey. Really? It's cruelty Thank stuff you. here. Thank you. It's um, not the sugar stuff here. Uh, just before, just before I finish, yes, I saw an Indian guy with a suitcase in our village. Um, three suitcases. So I said, "Let me help you." I started taking one suitcase. I looked at him and I said to him, "Man, I hope there's no drugs in here." <laughs> he stops and looks at me. He goes, "Are you being serious?" I said, "Of course, I'm joking." Yeah. So he goes, "Okay." I said, it "Won't be drugs. It'll be children." And he goes, "No, man. Come on, come on." So I walked it into his door. We had a laugh, but I'm very glad that um, I'm very glad that I, um, I could trust him. You know, he, um, uh, that he trusted me as well. That he didn't think that I was being racist or anything. And I, I, I'm very glad to take a sweet from you. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, 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 just, uh, um, it just means trust, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If I die later today, he's the man that killed me. <laughs> And Greg, it was a, lovely, a pleasure. You've got a lovely sense of humor. Thank you. All oh I'm my God. Ask you to consider yes. is the difference between God of Deuteronomy 20 and Allah in Surah 843-44. Is there anything you want me to consider? Um, first of all, I thank you for the conversation. Thank you. I enjoyed the conversation we had. Me too. I've learned quite a lot having a conversation with you. And, and I'd love to have further conversation. And um, what you mentioned, I'll have a you know further thought on it. And we can talk again, and I really appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. God bless you. Have a good one. Thank you. Do you know who to Yes, back to? yes, one of my friends, yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Greg. Have a good one. All right. We have finished, long finished.